coffee today with Dennis East um, in his new restaurant, The Black Rose, here in Cape Town. Uh, an icon in the South African music industry. Dennis, welcome to Cape Town. It's so good to be here. Amazing to be here. You know, um, it's been a dream of ours for a long, long time. And, and ironically, I made my first record 40 years ago at the end of this year. It kind of ages me, but so what? You know, this is a new phase. It's a new stage in our lives. Um, Cape Town's a place we've always wanted to be and we want to stay here forever. So we take over the Black Rose at the end of April. We're sitting in the Black Rose now. Uh, Christina Jacobs and her husband Al, it's their business and um, we'll be taking it over. So it is such a great challenge and uh, just something to look forward to. You know, people say to me, you know, you, you're in your 60s. I mean, I'm not scared to pe tell people that. But the fact of the matter is that why should I be scared of work at 60, you know, whatever? Because I'm going to come in here and we're going to work and I'm going to stay in the music game. I'll have my studio here and Stellenbosch is my new platform, you know, my new base. Although you're living a little bit closer to the sea. We in Somerset, we just, um, we're just very lucky to find the right place within three days of being here. And it's just everything is falling into place which tells me this was meant to happen, you know. You've got an innovative idea with regards to the Black Rose when you take over. Yes, so I think it's a great platform and a great, uh, it's, it's located perfectly for students, but not only students. To, I'm going to run music composition workshops and composition covering anything from television music to movie music to corporate music, writing lyrics um, and of course writing songs. And I will go a step further with the songwriting thing where I'll start recording the songs of the writers when they put them together and then do a tie-in with radio stations, etc and uh, promote it that way, promote the, the, the up-and-coming talent here for a start and students who aspire to do something in the music business, maybe they're taking a music, a BMUS or something at Stellenbosch, you know, they want to learn some of the practical side, I'm here to do that and I will probably start with a twice a month evening thing, the students will come along and uh, have a dinner and some wine and stuff and uh, the workshop will be two and a half hours of workshopping hands-on. Is rumour doing the rounds in Joburg that there's a wealth of uh, talent in Cape Town? I think everybody in Joburg is well aware of the talent in Cape Town. Great songwriters. A lot of the writers from Joburg have come and settled down here, funny enough, in this area. But the thing is that Cape Town has always had such a hotbed of great talent. If you go back to Leslie Ray Dowling and David Kramer and you name it, you know, Crocodile Harris, these guys are Cape Townians born and bred and um, it's never changed. You know, we have talent in every province, but the, Cape, the, the challenge for me in Cape Town is that we have a new breed of talent up and coming, and that is the exciting thing, the challenge, you know, for me. You're taking hands with Leon Peters from AdQ Vision. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your uh, partnership? Yeah, look, it's, 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 it's just created such a wonderful chance. I met Leon physically um, in December of 2012. He, he booked me on a show, and... Uh, Things have just developed from there. You know, we're going to be working on some media stuff and, of course, live shows and, and bringing artists to the fore here live. And so Leon's also very energetic in terms of, of taking the rope and grasping it and going with it. And those are the kind of people I want to work with. You know, and, and um, yes, we're not scared to work. And the two of us together, watch out. You'll be setting up a recording studio at your new home? Yes, please. I have a... Um, a studio which I've had in, in Joburg for 17 years. Um, it's a fully kitted digital studio. I've done a lot of projects with a lot of different artists. Um, just to kind of boast a little bit and name drop, we've sold 1.6 million records out of the studio, you know, with people like Dozy and Patricia Lewis and even the late Bress Bridges and rock bands, Amisham and people like that. I've worked with everybody. And uh, I'm moving the setup down here. It'll probably be initially at home because um, I need to be close to it and then separated from this business, from the Black Rose. So, you know, and I mean, I'm virtually 15, 10, 15 minutes away. So the studio will be the same studio, and uh, I still invite people to inquire about the studio, whether it's in Joburg, uh, KZN, it doesn't matter. Uh, they'll, all, they get, all, they think, all that's going to change is that everybody's going to work in a much more relaxed atmosphere. That I can guarantee. Can you reveal to us a name or two that you're looking at for the future? Well, one to start with is a guy I mentioned a minute ago is Dozy. Um, Dozy and I are working on a three album project together, which we will basically co fund. Um, Dozy basically, his biggest hit to date was Oray Bart, and it was written by uh, a late guy, the late Chris Bluchnot. 
and we're going to do a dozy sing um Chris. And you know, some of the, 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 the donkey and those songs, just dozy is such a character singer. He can sing rock, he can sing pop, and he's going to do a Zulu album. Awesome. And then we're going to do all these hits from Krasada to Orepe to the Donkey with a jazz feel. So those are the projects almost in that order. Wow. And uh, that's just one to start with. You know, I bumped into Karin Zoid when I was in Joburg and I said, I'm coming to Stellenbosch. She said, we get together. And those are the kind of things I look forward to so much. If you have to choose a favorite song that you've done, what, what would it be? You know, amazingly, um, I have an album out at the moment, Plug Plug. Um, which is called Take My Heart. Now this album was a tribute to me, from me, to the best South African hits and the singers that sang them. Way from the mid-1960s right through till now and the title track of the album is called Take My Heart. It's, a, it's based on an old classical piece but it's one of my favorite songs to sing. You know apart from my own hits like Damn It I Love You and A Million Drums, those will remain favorites because they've been, they're like my children. They've been with me my whole career. But as a song goes, I close my show with Take My Heart and I just absolutely love the song. It's so easy to sing and so kind of, it's heartwarming to sing a song like that. So uh, yeah, I would put that at the top um, and, and then the, the, my own songs sort of a little bit below that. But yeah, it's, um, it's a song I'll, I'll never stop singing. You said from a songwriter's perspective, a difference between writing an entertainment song versus a commercial jingle. Writing a commercial song as opposed to a song for a corporate or a jingle or a television series is theoretically the same application, but you're thinking differently, you have to turn that song around in a, in a very quick time, the commercial, the commercial advertising song. Whereas a lot of guys take sometimes up to a month or two to write one song, they'll write it and rewrite it and reshape it. When you're writing a TV commercial, it's instant, you're actually pleasing one guy. He's the guy that commissions you to do it, then the public have to buy into it. But initially, once I've pleased him, the song is complete. And I've done stuff for, for DSTV, for Mnet, for Supersport, um, TV themes for uh, pop stars and those shows. And those get accepted by the sponsor and the production company that booked me. And once that's accepted, my job is done. So that's what I'm going to teach people, that there are two ways of writing. You don't sit and get kind of ultra creative or purist with a, a commercialized song for promoting, promotional song. Um, because that the turnaround time there is quick. Yeah. The television crew has got to go and shoot the jingle. They need to lock it to picture in a matter of days, even hours sometimes. You know, um, and and that is very important that you you're able to think both ways. And a lot of people, including myself, write much better under pressure. If you come to me and say I need a song by Friday morning, we're now sitting today. I have to turn that around and deliver it to you complete. Sure. And I have no choice. The pressure's on and I tend to, I dig much deeper into my creative resources when it's like that. With a song I get ultra critical. I write a song and I think, oh that verse is a bit weak or that chorus is just lacking a bit of, a bit of power. Then I'll rewrite it and I can come back and back until I think it's right. Until you think it's perfect. It's, the other way is different. So those are the two fundamental differences. But theoretically it's the same application. Um, the plane's going to be slightly heavier on the way down uh, due to um, some photography talent that you're also importing to Cape Town. Would you well, like to tell us more about that? My son Gregory, or Greg as he likes to be called with two G's, uh, he's a professional photographer come uh, graphics artist. He will be setting up uh, his business, which will be a little shop in the same arcade as we are in, uh, in uh, the Black Rose, in the Nassau building between Plane and Church Street. Greg will be there operating, uh, he'll have his own site and everything, you can read up on him and I will provide that on Facebook in time, what the name of the business is and that's going to be his life down here because he is so creative and it's been very difficult in Joburg you know, for him because um, he's hard of hearing but he's not deaf, he can hear people believe me and it's sometimes with all due respect it's selective hearing you know? but um, he really is so talented and I think Stellenbosch and this area, Somerset Stellenbosch is conducive to his kind of talent, you know. He's already gelling with the people here in a different way. And so Greg will be coming down and you can look for his name and uh, he doesn't know it yet, but he's gonna help in the cafe a lot, you know, because he's good at, he's creative, he's great. And he's got a great sense of humor. So, you know, he's a guy that people wanna meet. Um, 
when you are you changing the name of your record label? No, no. I, as a matter of fact, my production company used to be called Shyam Productions, S H I A M, and it stood for sorry he's in a meeting. Um, and I'd like to divulge the story right now. I used to go with I used to work for David Gresham, and David and I used to go to London and try and get appointments. And every time I phoned for an appointment, even a week before. Sorry, he's in a meeting. I thought, this is crazy. The guy couldn't be living in a meeting, you know? No. And I keep writing the letters down that found, you know, it formed S H I A M. People think it's a red Indian name, they think it's some exotic name. That's all it stands for. <laughs> but a lot of people battle to spell it. They call it shame music and sham music, and, you know, so it's going to be Dennis, music, Dennis East music. That's it. But, you know, people remember your name. Yes. You know? <laughs> So we're gonna, it's going to be Dennis East Music. Our website will be DennisEastMusic.co.za, whatever it is. That's where we're going to keep it. You, know? you mentioned yesterday to me that you are a transformed man. Would you like to indulge us with a little bit of that? Um, being Cape Town transforming here, yeah, big time. You know, what's happened is the industry is hectic. Our Injoba guys working up to 17 hours a day. You know, the demands are there, people have got deadlines, and they don't care if you can't meet the deadline, there's someone else. And in Cape Town, we work 17 yes. hours a week. A week. There you go, eh? <laughs> I don't know if I should have come here. Yeah, 17 hours a week. Yeah. But the, the bottom line is that I don't mind putting in my 8, 10 hour day here in my business because I'm working for myself, my wife, and myself. Yvette is my wife. And this is her dream. This business is her absolute dream. And if, if, if we put in all that time, we get up at 6 in the morning, we're in the cafe, we open at 7 or 7.30. That's our life. The studio is there to create, and I'm already having a different attitude towards songwriting. I've put ideas together already down here. It's a different atmosphere for different surroundings, and last year nearly nearly put me out of business. Not not work-wise. I'm talking about health and stress. And my wife actually said to me last year, late last year, she said to me, "Vet said, I'm getting you out of this town." And then suddenly I met some folks who introduced us to the Black Rose. Um, then I met Leon. And everything has just rolled. We found a home, we met Leon, and everything else. Everything is slotted together, amazingly. Well, that's the good news. Because we work 17 hours a week, we spend six yes. hours a day in a coffee shop. So yeah, and the beach. But sides. yeah, mainly the coffee shop. Uh, we we'll have, we'll have to balance that out. I think they should spend more in the coffee shop uh, than six hours. <laughs> it's only about 45 minutes a day, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, but look, the, the coffee shop is also a great creative platform. Absolutely. And I would eventually like to incorporate some live stuff here, like very quiet. Um, someone just kind of entertaining, but get a name in here. And say, so come and join us on a Saturday morning and we meet Sansa and that kind of stuff. That is the dream. And the other thing, basically, is an idea that I picked up in the United States well over 20 years ago, maybe 25 years ago, that I went into a cafe, a restaurant, and the guy who came up to, to take my order had an apron on and a funny hat, and I just gave him my order and thought, that's fine. He walked away and he sat at a piano against the wall, and he played. And I wanted to get up and serve him. You know, and the condition of this place is that they employ music students, whether it's playing a flute or a sax or a clarinet or reciting poetry. Mm. Those people work in the place and they come and serve you and they play a bit and they come and bring your meal. And if I can start that as a bit of a trend, even on a once a week basis, is people come in here and they hear people, they hear new talent that's just blossoming. You know, you get a guy that's studying at the university, studying music, and he comes in here and he plays and people go, wow. Yes. You know? If you offer that to people, it's also a bit of a, a, a groundswell for being a creative place. You know, we just don't have the room to put in you know, live thrash metal bands. You know? yes, yes. Yeah, they're going to blow the windows and the roof off. But no, it's not going to be a club, so to speak. It is a coffee shop, essentially. And then I'm going to incorporate the arts and that sort of stuff into it. The main thing is I, I would like to impart 40 years of industry knowledge to people that I've learned, the lessons I've learned, the ups and downs, um, the yeses and the noes and the disappointments, you know, it's not, a, not an easy ride. But if people understand that, they know how to prepare themselves for the industry. And when you go into this industry, know that you're going into it. Mm. It's not a holiday, it's not fun. Of course there's the fun element, performing is fun, it's, it's coming from the heart. But don't think it's a free ride, you know. So it's, but that, look, that's the plus side. I want people to leave here on the workshop saying, so many things I've learned, yeah. you know. And you, you also mentioned yesterday that you want to sort of see if you can try and open doors for them as they leave. 
Definitely. I mean, things like song. Well, I'll be I'll be focusing mainly because my, my main forte in life is has been songwriting and producing and and being an artist along with that. But you know, I would like to see songwriters out of here and and uplift them by letting them demo their songs with me and then offering them to local big name artists. You know, and as I said earlier, like getting them to write commercials, which we can basically tie in with radio stations or even television, yeah. for that matter. You know, because this is fresh talent and they will write differently to me or to anybody else. So that is a fresh aspect and I want, I want to stay involved in that side. I want to see them, you know, develop. I've done it with, with singing artists in Joburg. I discover people, I get them record deals and they've done very well. It's the same with, with songwriting. Well, come April, Cape Town's reach a, another role model. Thank a you. Positive role model. Um, in one sentence, what would you say to the youth? I would say in one sentence to anyone watching or listening that I'm here now, I'm here for people, I'm here for new talent, I'm here for my coffee shop, and here for a new life. You know, that, that wasn't one sentence, but you can condense it into one. <laughs> but, but basically, I, I took advantage of that. But theoretically, look out for my new life. Excellent. Dennis, thank you so much. For thank you very much, Steve. Take my heart and make it thrill.